Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 2 of Road to Colonization. And today, today we start with a very important launch of a three-stage rocket. It's actually a Starlight 1, just with another stage slapped on top. Now today we're launching an ELU probe, because we have an ELU window coming up. And my ELU, ELU probe I sent in Road to Exploration, which will get there, will probably run out of electric charge, because its solar panels aren't big enough and it's going to be so far from the sun, and also because it's using the remote tech antenna, it's just gonna eat through all that electric charge. So this is equipped with radio thermal isotope generators. Yes, we've discovered a new technology that will allow us to generate the same amount of electricity no matter where we are in the solar system. They're very expensive, so this is um, smaller than the other probe. In fact, it doesn't have a lander on it. This is just a mere orbiter. At some point, we'll go to the um, go to the little ice ball with some kerbals, maybe. But yeah, this is just an orbiter that we'll be heading out there, which also means I can uh, launch it on this nice little three-stage rocket um, with liquid fuel and oxidizer rather than uh, a big nuclear stage, which would be really annoying. So anyway, yes, we've ditched the first stage. Now we're just going to push on into orbit. We don't have a ton of thrust uh, to weight ratio right now because, well... You know, there's a whole extra stage on top of there. But yeah, Pulsar... No, did I, say, did I say Pulsar? I meant Starlight. That's the rocket that this is. Starlight 1, the replacement for the old Pulsar rockets. Um, is doing quite a good job. Uh, but yes, now we need to go and land that stage, which we will do gloriously. Probably not as gloriously as the Falcon 9 landing I just watched, which, for the timing of this video, was yesterday. You got to see the rocket land live on the drone ship. It was amazing. But this is just a KSP landing, pretty beautiful, stick it pretty nicely, fire up the engines, pull the chutes, and get back into space. Um, so yeah, burn on into orbit, um, very happy that we landed the rocket, and yes, we're almost there, delivering it nicely, and hopefully we'll have enough fuel to land this second stage, which I think I did. <laughs> it's hard to keep track sometimes, there's a lot of stuff going on in my space program. Anyway, we'll get rid of that, and go and land it right now, actually. I did land it, good job, Peter! <laughs> um, yes, obviously makes it much cheaper to land your rockets. If you didn't watch Road to Exploration, all of my rockets are reusable, um, uh, which all of these rockets were designed in Road to Exploration, which was the series before this, and they are all reusable, which means that I can uh, get all the money, well, most of the money back for them, minus the fuel and about 2% of their funds. Anyway, we come down pretty close to the KSC um, after, you know, deorbiting and re-entering and land on parachutes. I think this can land entirely on parachutes, but I'm going to fire up the engines anyway, because it is land, and land is a little harsh. And there we go. Beautiful. Anyway, back in space a little later. After planning the maneuver, we are getting ready to head on to ELU, which should be a pretty quick burn with this Poodle engine. Very nice to do this. I, I Nuclear engines are great, but they take so long to do burns. You may have noticed, if you did watch Road to Exploration, that I really hate long burns. So I usually include, even in nuclear-powered spacecraft, a bunch of boosters which make it a little quicker. I actually don't mind long burns, I find them quite uh, relaxing, but it's just when you have to do two orbits around Kerbin, it stresses me out. Anyway, so there we go, we've got our burn done, we're gonna head on up to um, ELU pretty well. That was obviously at four times time accelerated. It did take a little longer than that in actuality. And then we just got to do a bit, a bit of a plane change and a fine tune, and we should arrive nicely at ELU. Um, gonna change it a little more. We've got enough delta V actually. Actually, when I plan this, we don't. But I planned it a little later off camera to use about 200, well, 150 meters per second less delta V, which means we will just get into orbit of ELU, which is nice. That's all we need because this is just gonna do some orbital science and act as a relay for when we go there with Kerbals. Or send a lander there later at some point. Anyway, back to the mission at hand right now for our space program. We are building the Odin Station, and we're launching the final fuel module atop a Pulsar Y. And this will head up there, dock to the station, and comp complete the giant modules of fuel, which will hold more than enough fuel for many a mission, which means I won't have to constantly refuel it. Also, I probably won't be launching too many fueling missions anymore, because I'm going to set up a mining operation on Minmus for multiple things, partly for fuel, and also to mine um, metal so that I can make rockets on the station, because this station is going to be a powerhouse. It is going to build everything we need. We may have to send up some... Um, extra tanks for holding extra rocket parts and metal and stuff so that we can process, process it and build rockets in space. But yeah, this is an industrial station. Um, however, I, I apparently overlooked a few design things, and as you'll see later, it's also quite a compact station. Anyway, well, not compact, just a little, there's a lot of stuff when, you know, yeah, you'll see later. Anyway, then we're just going to land that uh, second stage, uh, the first stage even, on the ocean rather beautifully. 
Um, obviously we see that quite a lot, so I just usually show the landing. And then we're going to boost on into orbit. It's a little unstable because the probe cores apparently not well, it, the joints are quite weak. Um, but yeah, then we're just going to burn until we have a nice, um, nice encounter, and then we're going to head around the planet which you don't really need to see. And then we're just gonna make sure that we are heading actually for the station, which just requires putting the retrograde marker over the um, opposite way that tar target is. You know how you do that. You put the marker over the marker and you get there. And then it's just a matter of arriving at the station, docking and completing the huge amount of fuel. Yes, the habitation for this um, space station is actually very small compared to the fuel and the building bits. Um, but yeah, it's mostly about storing fuel. However, you can see that some of the docking ports on this side of the fuel tanks will be pretty hard to dock to because of the um, life support module and the workshop. I may have to look at that in the future and rearrange it a little bit, but um, for now we're just gonna, just gonna leave it like that. There's still a bunch more docking ports. Anyway, another launch of the for things for the station, and we're just gonna cut through most of this because it's another launch, you've seen the launches, so yeah, there's just a few bits. Um, my uh, editing software is being kind of weird, so I'm actually not even seeing this, it's just freezing up. Oh, there we go, landing the second, the first stage. So yeah, sorry, sorry, I didn't even see that. But anyway, we get to the thing. We slow down with this nice monopropellant engine, and you can see these are the habitation modules. Each of them hold nine Kerbals, um, four in each of those habitation like the hitchhiker containers, and they each have a cupola, so we can stare out at the beauty after uh, long days working in the workshop. Yes, I think in this series I probably will cut out quite a lot of the, um, well, to do that kind of editing for the launch, uh, for launches that happen frequently, or just get the mod that automates those kind of launches. I don't know, because this is all about doing awesome stuff, and that's why we need this station. I am a little sorry that it's another, sta another episode of uh, station building, but this is the thing we need to do all of our missions. We actually have a brief Minmus mission coming up just to raise a few funds. Um, and then it's going to be mostly about, um, well, various things. But I want to get on with making a Minmus mining operation and a moon mining operation so I don't have to send fuel out to the moon. Anyway, we're going to get rid of a bunch of the extra stuff like those, all of the... Um, the RCS thrusters I don't need, and this tug, which this monopropellant engine has an ISP of 340, so I should use that in the future. And then we're going to do a few other things, but after that, the station is all sleek and finished for now, and looks rather beautiful. We'll do a quick orbit and stare at the beauty of the station. Yeah, not bad, not bad at all. Anyway, we've got to land the uh, second stage. We land it right next to the KSC, but once again in the water, which is a little annoying. Apparently, I also forgot to land another stage, either from last time or... I think earlier this episode. So we land that too, again, pretty much in the exact same spot. I'm getting good at this, I just need to move it onto the launch pad because that'd be way cooler. And now, we need to send the first crew to the space station, to the Odin station. This, these are seven brave Kerbals, all of the B team, because they didn't get to go to Duna. They're feeling a little mess, they're feeling a little angry that they didn't get to go to Duna. But I explained to them, unless you're wearing orange, you don't get to go to Duna, um, except a couple of people who weren't wearing. Shut up. Anyway, it doesn't matter. But yeah, this is seven Kerbals in the Ares 3, which is my Dragon 2 type spacecraft. He's going to head on up there. We've got three pilots, three engineers, and one scientist, because I'm very short for scientists right now. They'll be completing various missions in their time. They'll be heading out to the moon and Minmus to do science missions and mining and industrious missions. They will also be constructing vehicles in space, some test launch, some test vehicles, and some actual, possibly um, useful vehicles once we've got more um, resources. They'll also be um, learning more about living in space for the long term and potentially doing some maintenance on the space station, such as rearranging it, because um, some of the docking ports are a little bit blocked. There are enough for now, but... Well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, we'll uh, deal with that at a later date. So, now uh, the Dragon 2 detach. No, the Ares 3. It's not actually a Dragon 2. Um, the Dragon 2 is much prettier. But anyway, we detach from the rocket and we're going to head on out there. Um, well, head on ar around there to meet the station. Um, so yeah, there we go. Coming in nice and close. This is a nice uh, vehicle to fly in space, actually, because it has landing engines, which are obviously capable of landing on Kerbin. Um, so it means we have a lot of thrust for moving around. My other manned vehicle, if you didn't see air, um, Road to Exploration, was the Ares 1, which just had a few monopropellant engines and thrusters, which gave me very little thrust-to-weight ratio, which made it kind of annoying 
to um, perform orbital maneuvers. But yeah, here we are, just moving on to the, one of these top docking ports. I may move this vehicle to a different docking port, maybe the one on the control, on the command module, because it's a very wide spacecraft, so it blocks um, one of the other, well, it almost blocks one of the other docking ports, which is kind of annoying. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so we're just going to kind of maneuver in with the RCSs. The RCS is a little unbalanced because I can't actually mount RCS thrusters on a fairing, and the fairing covers the other crew module um, and some various other things like life support supplies. But yeah, for now it's fine, and we do manage to dock. Uh, Mitgun Kerbin at the helm, the fifth Kerbal we ever, you know, uh, acquired. We rescued him. Um, and he was uh, the fifth couple, yeah, yeah. After the after the big four with the suits, he didn't go to Duna because we didn't need another pilot. He was like just the next on the list. Anyway, we're going to put some Kerbals in various places. We put them in the command modules and the habitation modules. More of them in the cupola because um, we want to take a look out of that beautiful window and see what Kerbin's looking like. So let's take a look right now. Well, it is looking rather nice today, looking down um, out of the cupola. Anyway. If you remember from Road to Exploration, we had a couple of spacecraft lying in orbit that were on the Hermes station. They are the Thor 1 lander, which is a moon and Minmus lander, which can go all the way out to Minmus land and come back, and the Ares 4, which is a long range. Um, it's a it's it's a long range basically fer not a long range ferry just a a space ferry capable of ferrying seven kerbals and some resources out to either the moon or Minmus's orbit. Um, and yeah, so that's quite a useful vehicle. So we didn't deorbit them with the station, and we're gonna maneuver them in. They've got a little bit of fuel left, and we're just gonna yeah maneuver them, maneuver them in. I can't say maneuver today. Anyway, um, yeah, you can also see there's a little red dot on the map view above the station, and it's the same as the one down at the KSC. It turns out, funnily enough, that um, if you have um, Kerbals on a space station, you can actually. Uh, you can you can control vehicles from there technically, which means that if you had say Kerbals out at Jewel and some probes out at Jewel, you could control those probes from the Kerbals, which would mean the time delay would be much lower than if it were on uh, if than if it were communicating back with Kerbin, which is great because in remote tech there's a time delay, unlike in stock KSP 1.2. I think this is how it works in KSP 1.2 as well, but this is KSP 1.1.2. With a remote tech mod. Anyway, so we're going to take the lander and we're going to head over here and dock with the station. I'm going to go for this docking port. You can see this is a little crowded because that um, that uh, resource module is sticking down, which is kind of annoying. Um, but it looks like I will be able to just dock there. I might move that um, resource thing to the end of one of these beams, actually. Um, I could have also docked this to the docking port on the resource store, but apparently I thought it was more appropriate to dock resource vehicles there. But yeah, you can see it looks a little cramped and a little janky like this, so I'm probably going to move that. Um, anyway, that'll be all for the future, but now I'm going to maneuver this in. But this... This is kind of annoying because this doesn't actually have a probe core on it, it just has a mech jab unit, which means it has pretty limited control and it is running out of monorepellent, which means it's going to be pretty hard to maneuver in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of stop it in its tracks and I'm going to send a Kerbal out in a different spacecraft to go and rescue it because it'll make it a little easier. So we're going to get Mitgun into the Thor 1 lander. Um, and we're going to undock. We're going to leave the big fuel tank behind because the fuel tank on, on the front of the Thor lander is just for long range um, missions, so say going to the moon or Minmus where it needs more fuel and it leaves that in orbit of the moon or Minmus and then goes and lands. I'm sure most of you know this because you watched uh, Road to Exploration, but there is a chance that people are new to this series and I want to make this accessible without having to watch the other series because there's 55 episodes. Although actually, no, you should totally go watch them because I get paid for that. <laughs> no, don't feel obligated. I'll try and explain things but try and not make it too annoying. I don't know. It's probably pretty self-explanatory. There's already a space program going. We're building off that space program to do some more awesome things. So anyway, yeah, here we are just talking to the Ares 4. And then we're going to maneuver over and then dock these to their respective docking ports. I am actually not super happy with how this, uh, the space station looks right now. I do want to rearrange it because it looks kind of janky. I don't know. Uh, maybe you have suggestions. There's not a ton you can do with it. I think I just want to move some of the resource modules around a bit and maybe the workshop, but I think that'll be quite hard to move um, because it doesn't actually have a second docking port on it. So I might just move the resource thing about, maybe even move one of the giant fuel tanks. I'm not sure. 
Um, I guess I'll take a look at it, because it does look a little weird. Mo it looked fine before, I think. It's when I docked all the vehicles to it, it started to look kind of weird. Um, I accidentally tr moved the cur one of the Kerbals to the wrong spacecraft, which doesn't have any Marna propellant in it. So I'm going to have to get um, Mick going to cross to the right spacecraft, get him in, and then dock back to the Ares 4 so that I can transfer all of the fuel... Well, no, I can transfer half of the Marna propellant from the um, Thor into the Ares, so the Ares can go and dock. So yeah, um... Now the Ares is going to head on over there, because the Ares can control itself, but the Thor can't without its big fuel tank, because that's where the probe core is. Um, however, this isn't particularly controllable, but it's fine. We just have to do a quick docking maneuver, and we're going to get on to that right now. Bit of a shame that it's in the dark. Sorry about that. I know KSP looks a bit grim in the dark, especially because YouTube compresses videos slightly, because it has to store, you know, terrible, well, more than probably petabytes of videos every day. It's ridiculous. I don't know how that how that happens. Uh, it's funny when people complain about like, oh, YouTube compression. It's like, dude, you know how much data they have to store. Um, anyway, so yeah, we're gonna dock this over here um, in the very tight squeeze of the space station. Yeah, I, we, I'm just gonna move that thing. It'll free up two more docking ports and it'll look better. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that is that, and that is the episode. Other than landing the booster, which we'll see right now, of course because we need to bring the rockets back, because we need that money back and a beautiful sunset. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. That is the station constructed. There'll be a little bit more rearrangement and probably add a few things in the future. But for now, that's done. So next episode, there will be less of this. I know these first two episodes have been a bit mundane, but there will be moon missions and Minmus missions and some more stuff around Duna and generally setting up some awesome stuff. And I think it'll be really fun. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed this, but this is the end of the video. And if you want to go check out a couple more videos, there's a video I did yesterday on Prison Architect, which is a fantastic game. I just, you know, started building the prison, and it'll be really fun to do that. I'll probably do, you know, a few episodes on that. And there's also a video I did a while ago, no, a few days ago, on Gang Beasts, um, which has an online multiplayer now, so you can have these giant fights between these weird monsters um, online. That sounds nothing like what the game is. Just go check it out, it's awesome. There's also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I'll see you next time.